means that all the hard work was already done. <laughs> <laughs> I could have worn a suit, but it, I didn't realize that when I got there that they were going to be up yeah. early, not only on time, they were early, which was amazing. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? Good time. <laughs> Bring some more middles in. This is <laughs> my time giving y'all a speech or I can spend my time answering your questions. I would far, I would rather give give time to hear what you have to say as opposed to using the time that I have for y'all to hear what I have to say. I do want to recognize my my, my opponent, Reverend Dixon over here, who uh, ran a strong theater. Good morning. Who ran a A bruising race at times, but always <laughs> a race based on integrity. Uh, we don't agree on everything, but I don't think we have to agree on everything and want the same outcome, which is a community that is moving forward. So I thank God that you ran the type of race that you ran, uh, though I wish you wouldn't have hit so hard sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he puts the, when he puts the bullseye on you, you can hit. <laughs> I appreciate that though. So, but he and I, uh, uh, he's called me, I called him back, he's called me back. So he and I have actually been able to exchange some calls. So we're gonna spend some time together, hopefully before Christmas, uh, working on areas where we actually have common ground. Because as I said on the campaign trail, I'll work with anyone at any time from anywhere if we're going to work on making the community better. Uh, Reverend Dixon has a hard core passion for making the community better. I'm gonna work with Reverend Dixon as often as he will work with me in my office to make sure that we continue to work on behalf of the community. With that said, happy to open the floor for questions. And if you don't have any questions, I, I have learned how to say nothing for a very long time. <laughs> I'm skilled at that part. Just joking, Reverend Dixon, who's recording it right now. So, just, just, just joking. Uh, you're gonna be governor now or later. And well, it does not appear to be now. <laughs> all right, so we've all seen the news. Uh, Nikki Haley is becoming the UN ambassador, which means that Henry McMaster will become your governor uh, for the last two years of her term. He will appoint the next lieutenant governor, and then I'm sure that he will run for re-election. His decision doesn't affect my decision. Uh, I have made it a habit to do what it is that I think the Lord has called me to do, when it is that I think the Lord has called me to do it. So, uh, we feel like we're in a very strong position to continue to work in the Senate or, or to come home if the Lord calls me to come home and, and be governor. So we're not ruling anything out. We have been very consistent in our position that I think the next several months are going to be very exciting months in our country's history. And it's going to take uh, a, a voice on the national scene to be from, from home to be a part of that conversation. So I plan to be that voice, especially in the next few months. And then after the next 100 days or so, once I figured out the lay of the land in Washington that I'll make a decision on whether or not coming home now, I in 2018. You get ahead of It's better than later. Thank so, you, you never know. I wanted to be governor when I was in high school. I <laughs> 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 they do. I, was, I ran for governor at Boy State. I lost. I want to get my revenge. So you never know. <laughs> yeah, it might, might be 20, 20, 22, 20, 26 before I get there. But God willing, I've been blessed already. And if I were to go home and be with Jesus tomorrow, uh, I have had a life that is unbelievable. So I want to make sure that the kids that are coming behind me have more opportunities than, than I did. So that's why I'm in office. Yes, ma'am. Yes, can you please give me three reasons why African Americans should join the Republican Party? So three reasons why African Americans should join the Republican Party. One more. Yeah. I can give her all three of them. And so I'm not even agree with me, but let me tell you a couple reasons why. Here's what I believe. And I do, I do believe that we should align ourselves philosophically with our values. I don't ask anyone to necessarily join the Republican Party. I ask everyone to vote consistent with their values. And if your values are more in line with the conservative party, then you should join the conservative party. So let me give you a couple of examples of why I think being a Republican is good for me and good for our state and frankly good for the country. Uh, it's called the Opportunity Agenda. It, I've been working on this for six years I've been in Congress. I worked on this on the county level when I was a county council member in the state house, and we've produced some really positive results. On the county level, I worked on this literally in 
2002, 2003, where I negotiated after we passed the half penny sales tax. I negotiated the contract with LPA to provide for a, a certain level of, of minority participation. Before that contract, Charleston County was at 3% minority participation. After that contract, with more money going into the private than we've seen in a long time, they got the goals in the contract were 18%. They exceeded the goal. So focusing on opportunity is the key. So negotiating effectively on, the, on behalf of folks who are private sector business people is, is what I enjoy doing. It's my specialty. So I'm going to continue to do that. So part of the opportunity is to create access for entrepreneurs to the resources and the opportunities that are out there. On the state level, I did the same thing. Uh, I was the economic development chairman for Charleston County five different times. Uh, we negotiated the, the deal with Vought and Alenia, which became Boeing later on. It was $1,100, it became $8,000. The state house and we approved that deal in September or October of 2009. Uh, on the Senate level, I've worked on the opportunity agenda as well, which the foundation is education. I believe that Ruth is an expert of this, I'm a novice, but I believe that every child in every zip code deserves a quality education. I don't care whether that's public schools, whether it's charter schools, whether it's magnet schools, whether it's virtual schools, whether it's private schools, I don't care what it is. I know that I went to four different elementary schools by the fourth grade. Because when you're poor, sometimes you gotta move. Yeah. So for me, that means that it's my responsibility responsibility to make sure that we have quality education in every zip code, and I don't care what it takes to get there, because the one thing with, which is true, is if you do not have a quality education, the haves versus have lots gets wider. So some have criticized me for being willing to support charter schools, private schools. If you've got a failing school, we've got to break that cycle, because that cycle is nearly impossible to break when you're 40. You can break it when you're six. So I focus a lot of my time on education. Second part of my opportunity agenda and why I think being a club is a good thing is that is this work skills. Uh, one of the things that we're realizing for those kids who did not get the education they wanted when they were in school, they still need a job. They still want to support their families. I went to uh, two state prisons and served meals for several hours so that I could get in my head what, the, what today's prisoner faces on the way out. It's easy to talk about it by reading a book. It's better to go to where folks live, where the challenges are, understand that. Work skills are a very important part of that. Uh, South Carolina is getting ready to start an experiment. Kansas has been leading that experiment. The experiment is on how to make sure that the folks who are incarcerated have opportunities to develop skills while they're incarcerated. This is becoming a phenomenal success story. I think it's Kansas, it's the state of the the person taking the notice is going to make sure I'm right or wrong later on. The Kansas has started hiring people while they're still incarcerated. Companies are coming in, hiring people while they're incarcerated. If you work for the state, you get about a dollar a day, I think it is, or 50 cents an hour. If you work for a company that comes into a prison, you get the minimum wage or better. The difference is about a lifetime of difference. Folks are leaving jail between 10 and 40,000 in their accounts while paying retribution while they're there. So focusing on work skills in prison but also out of prison because most of the folks who don't graduate from high school and those who do all want to support their families above the average wage in the state, which requires work skills. And in South Carolina specifically, the high-tech manufacturing state, you don't necessarily need a college education to make more than the minimum wage, to, to, to make more than the average wage in South Carolina. What you need are skills that are applicable. We have 70,000 open jobs in South Carolina. We have 6 million, it's 5.8. We have nearly 6 million jobs open in America. 75% of those jobs do not require a college education. We need to make sure that the worker and the job are close, part of the opportunity agenda. Apprenticeship programs is, a, is another part of that rationale. Fourth part is access to capital. I got my business started when I was a, a, a younger man. I'm 39 now, so that's <laughs> 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 so, 16. 
Minority Businessman of the Year, right Al? I would Al in 1999, Al was the first and the only person to write me a personal check for a decent amount of money to help me start my all state insurance agency that became the agency that led into the real estate business. But had it not been for someone who believed in me, because the banks did not, I would not have been able to open my business. And then the Bank of America came along after that. And after he spotted me a couple dollars, I could get more money. Creating access to capital should be a major part of what we're looking for. The third part, the fourth or fifth part, is making sure we defend our nation. And being strong in our military, my, my father, though I didn't grow up with him, was an Air Force guy, uh, good man, serving our country. My, my brother, 32 years in the Army. Uh, my other, my, my, my stepbrother, Air Force Academy grad, 25 years in the Air Force. I want someone who wants to support the, the troops. I think we're probably going to do a better job of that. And then our faithful disposition, I think, is clear. One party has no.